Today I'm going to show you how to master jazz chord changes fast. And this lesson is for everyone, not just for guitar players. And stick around because I'm going to give you the tools to finally improvise pretty quickly over fairly difficult uh, chord changes. So if you want to have a tactic to address a difficult piece and already being able after just like 10 minutes to improvise over it, then this is the lesson for you. And I like to use as an example a very famous jazz standard called All the Things You Are, because we can use it as an example to have a process that you can then apply to every tune you like. So the first strategy I would use is the following. I would take the tune and try to group as many chords as possible in one key. And if I cannot group the chords in one key, that means that I have to group maybe them in another key. And so the idea is to have as less keys as possible in the tune, to have an overview of all the different sharps or flats that we need to know, so to speak. So let me show you what I mean. If we take all the things you are, then we start with F minor, then we go to B minor, so F minor 7, B minor 7, then E flat 7 to A flat major 7 to D major 7. All these chords so far are in one key. So far it's a pop song. It's in A flat major or in F minor if you want, but let's make it easy and let's just think about major for the sake of the of simplicity here. So if we analyze it, we have, if we said it's in A flat major, then we have six, the F is six, two, five, E flat seven, one, A flat major, that's four. Everything makes sense in A flat. But now we have something else. Now we have a 2-5 in minor, or just a 5 alternate in many cases, to go to C major. So here we cannot stay in the original key. So we need to change our mindset and change the key. So we can say, all right, we are going to C. So we are doing a 5 and a 1. To C major. So that means that we can group this first part and we say that's A flat and then we can group this part and we have 5 and 1 in the new key, C major. Now it gets interesting. The same chords come once again but now they are in E flat. So this C that was major becomes minor and this is again the 6, but of the next key. So we have C to F minor to B7 to E flat major to A flat major. This is the same thing in another key, in E flat, because we have 6, 2, 5, 1, 4, again. So you see, we have just three keys. It's way easier right now because we have A flat major, C major, E flat major. And now we have, again we ignore the two, we do just a five. So D7 to G, five to one in the new key, in G. So we had A flat as a key, we had C as a key, then we had E flat, and then we have now G as a key. That's it. And now in the bridge, it's easy because we stay in G because we have two, A minor seven, five of G, so D seven and one. And now again, new key because F sharp doesn't make sense in G major. It should be half diminished, but it's minor. So we have a two, five, one. 
in E major. So again, one more new key. So to summarize so far, we said we have A flat, then we have C, then we have E flat, then we have G. Then we, we stay in G for the bridge, and still in the bridge, we go to E, and now we go back to the original key. We do a five of the F, so this one is kind of on its own. We're gonna talk about it later. And then we go back. We have the same exact thing as before, as a, the beginning. So we are back in A flat. We have six, two, five, one, four. And now the most difficult part of the song starts because we have a four minor, then we go to three, still in A flat, so we can keep it in A flat. Then we have a B diminished, we're gonna talk about that also later. Then we have still in A flat, a two, then a five, and one. And that's it. And then again our C to go back. As you see, we actually have how many? Five keys? Six keys? It's not, it's not easy, but it's way easier than thinking about every single chord, right? So if you do that, you group the keys together, then you can use this to improvise, thinking about the song like multiple easy songs put together. What I mean by that? I mean that when we have... You just think one. You just, you just think A flat major and you solo... in A major, and that works perfectly. Then you do the same thing for the, for the C. And then you do the same thing for the E flat when we are here, right? It always works. And then you do the same thing for the G, then you do the same thing for the E, and then you do the same thing um, when you go back again to the A flat. So actually, the only thing that we really need to play very clearly are these three chords that are outside of the normal major world. One is the C7, flat 9, flat 13 that we have to go to the F minor. But actually, it's not that far away. You can just think about an A flat major, but with an E. So what is this scale? That comes from the harmonic minor world. We are playing F harmonic minor, or the fifth degree of F harmonic minor. So basically, we have the same notes as an A flat major, but we don't have an E flat, we have an E. Everything else is the same. So you just move this one note there. And that's it, that's all you have to do. And now, the other one that is difficult is the D flat minor six, or minor major, that you can also play it like that. And so this, uh, we, we have two different things that we can do. We can see it as a Dorian scale, if we play it minor six, so we can, we can use... We, we can see it actually as a two of B, or you can play it as a D flat melodic minor. And maybe this is a little more difficult. I don't know if you want to do that. Then it would sound like this. Nice sound, right? Then it goes to the key we said, and then we have this diminished chord. Now this B diminished doesn't make sense in, in A flat major. So the easiest thing you can do is just to see the arpeggio of the diminished chord. So we 
we really need to play this diminished chord. And then you are back in the key. So basically, what you really need to check out are three chords, and the rest is just a major scale, another major scale, another major scale. So that's the quickest strategy I know to improvise very fast over complex chord changes, over tunes that have multiple keys and different movements and not just, and don't stay just in one key. All right, now that you know the trick, let me demonstrate it to you. I'm gonna play as simply as possible. So no chromatism, no arpeggios, no bebop language, nothing at all. Just what I just explained to you. So major scales always, except for these three chords that we really need to play. So. So you heard there, there was no bebop in these lines. It doesn't really sound like jazz already, so to speak, but it already sounds good. So that was the goal of this lesson. Of course, we can go deeper and deeper into this topic and let me know in the comments if you would like to learn more about how to really play over changes and complicated changes especially. And I'm going to do some new lessons about it. Now, I'm sure that some of you are already thinking, yeah, but Christian, you are not really playing the changes like that. And you are right, you are right. When I say, if we have one key for more bars and we just think about the major scale, it's true, we are not really showing the changes. That would be the next step and for that we have other exercises that we can do. Let me know in the comments if you would like me to go deeper into this topic. But the lesson of today was about being quick and being able to play something that makes sense as fast as possible and not starting already with all the exercises over every single chord. Of course, that's the next step. That would be just the very first strategy I would use to learn a new piece as quickly as possible. So I hope that the lesson was helpful. Let me know in the comments. Let me know if you have questions. Of course, as usual, you're going to find the PDF um, with the link in the description. And it's completely free. You can download it on my Patreon channel. And talking about Patreon channel, I have already one lesson about this topic, um, which is a little more advanced than this one today. Um, and the lesson is about how to play over complicated chord changes and that's the best exercise I know to play over complicated chord changes. But the lesson, you, you will find it on Patreon but you won't find it here on YouTube. So if you are interested, go check it out on my Patreon channel. The link is in the description and see you for the next video.